Hi everybody. So, so it's a it's an intro to PHP internals. Um, so I gave this talk exactly like four years ago, um, uh, but many things have actually changed from uh, what I'm going to talk. Some of the things actually have changed uh, because from PHP five to PHP seven there was many internal things that were changed to improve the performance, um, while at the same time having almost the same code. So you could run the same code and it would still run like X number of times faster as like Rasmus talked in the, in the PHP conference. Um, so therefore it's, it's quite changed a bit, but some of the fundamental things are pretty much the, still the same. It's just the intricate stuff. Okay, so uh, PHP is actually written in C uh, and also in PHP actually. So there is PHP scripts uh, that generate C code. So in theory, you actually need PHP to generate to generate or build PHP. Um, so if you're doing some language stuff, it might be actually quite hard for you to do because the PHP that generates that C code might be wrong and invalid, so you wouldn't get it. So there's kind of uh, there might be weirdness like that. Um, so this, uh, the source code for PHP is in GitHub slash PHP slash PHP dash source. Uh, there is branches and they have uh, each of their versions and things like that. But master is typically has the cutting edge. Um, okay, so this is the, this is the framework of PHP. Um, so in the, in the external, there is something called uh, TS. Uh, RM typically, if you like look at the source code, it says uh, TSRM. It's um, it's basically for thread management. Um, um, to say more than that, I'm not sure uh, because things I know are like gone. Um, then there is something called the SAPI. So SAPI is the Server API, server application programming interface, or something like that. I, I think it's server. I can't remember anymore. Um, uh, so SAPI is the one that connects PHP uh, to the outside world. Uh, so if a request comes in, it goes through SAPI typically. Uh, then there is two parts: uh, the PHP core, uh, which has uh, file I/O, networking, and uh, things like that. Uh, then there is a send engine. Send engine is the one that actually uh, lexes your code, passes your code, generates the opcode, compiles them, runs the opcode in the ZenVM, and kind of does everything. That's critical. Um, then there is uh, PHP extensions uh, that are uh, first class, I guess, first, first party PHP extensions. Um, so these extensions are date and time, MySQL, uh, curl, uh, there is tokenizer, there is, there is I think about 20 first class, um, first class extensions and some, uh, some uh, there is many, the most crucial stuff that you might use like string stuff are in, in something called standard extensions, uh, but most of the things that you uh, write code for is typically calling a PHP extension to get the functionality. Um, uh, there is like extensions like curl are uh, like very uh, are bindings to the lib curl um, and then actual re-implementation or something like that. But they're just bindings. Uh, that's why if you see curl, you'll see like the curl dot php dot php underscore curl dot h file or c file, you see lot of constants and they have like exact versions of curl that, that should be there to use this uh, constants. So you'll see ton of constants. If, you're, if you like documentation, that's like one place you can go to because there's all these constants there. Or like if you want to contribute, I think it's probably like one pretty easy thing. You just have to add constants. Um, yeah, so that's the PHP overview. So that's the, this is the processor cycle, process cycle. Uh, so some some code comes in, like code comes in. Uh, I'm not sure whether you're familiar with opcache, APC, uh, what's a send 
can send cash, send up cash, send cash, something like that. Um, send up demand, I guess. Um, so first, when PH, the script comes in, you look, the, look up the up cache to see whether the, there is already compiled data there. Or uh, the way it checks it, uh, previously it would just re, it would just uh, check whether the file was uh, modified. So if the file was modified, uh, then this thing would fail. So if it's if the, there's no code, nothing in op cache, it goes to, it passes the code, generates op code, and then saves to uh, memory, which is op cache, and then it's, the Zen VM executes them, and then you kind of get the output. Um, the other way you obviously can see, if it's in the op cache, it takes it from memory, and then directly goes to Zen VM. Uh, so therefore, for obvious reasons, uh, if you have op cache, it's drastically going to increase your performance because it doesn't have to recompile these things. Um, also, so you, you have heard me saying compiled a few times, but you would say PHP is interpreter, but it actually does compile to something. And that something is, can be reusable. It's not uh, like if you know Lisp, Lisp is a pretty much, you can write an interpreter it's, it's an interpreter you just go through, and then uh, you go one by one, and then you execute while you are running it. But PHP does not execute while parsing. It executes after parsing, optimization, and everything. So um, yeah, that's why I say compiled every time. Um, so the life cycle of PHP is when you run PHP dot, um, run dot PHP, uh, the CL comes in, the SAPI starts, and uh, so there's something called uh, M in it, which is the engine in it, uh, engine start. So what happens is if you have 20 or somewhat extensions, it will call M in it on all the extensions, and it kind of starts up these extensions. So what happens is if you have an extension that has to do uh, who, which has to declare constants in the global scope, or which has to uh, have like database connections. So it would start up your database connections on the engine start level. Um, then the request actually, uh, the R in it gets executed on the, and that's, uh, that's when the request comes in. Uh, when you run it in the client, they all happen, every, everything happens in one go. Um, so after the R in it, it processes the code, and then engine uh, requests uh, shuts down, engine shuts down, and PHP stops. Let's see how it's kind of different now. So there's this multi-threaded lifecycle of PHP, which, as you can see, there's one in it. So your database uh, connections are actually done in the M minute, and then you have the request running in threads. So it's actually using the same uh, database connection that was, uh, that was uh, opened. So you don't actually have to open a connection every time you do this. And this is same for like global variables and constants and, sorry, not global variables, constants. Um, yeah. Uh, so there's the multiprocessor uh, type of SAPI, which I think it might be uh, P Apache 2 or something, probably uses this. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, so this happens, uh, happens in every process. So in every process, there will be a database connection. That's great. Um, so, that's w so now you kind of understand why there's an engine in it, engine start, and a request start. Why are they, how are they different, and why, what purpose do they serve? OK. So anybody heard about CVALs? So, uh, PHP is at heart, uh, everything is, uh, is a Z-Val. Every variable is a Z-Val. Every array, everything is a Z-Val. So Z-Val is the atomic of anything in PHP. So um, uh, there's a, uh, this is on the right side. How many of you know C? C, OK. Uh, so this is a struct. Uh, this defines the Z-Val. So when you have an, um, 
when you have a equals one or something, the a equals one actually points to this z val gets. I'll, I'll talk about it a bit more after. So this has four uh, four types of information in it. I'll just skip the first one. The second one is called ref counting, which I will talk talk about later. Ref counting is used for garbage collection. And next is the type. This is the type of the variable: a int, float, string, null. What is it? It can hold about I think eight. So there is eight uh, types that can be assigned to this type. So this is where your um, variable type is actually set. Uh, so then you'll be asking, PHP is dynamically typed. So what's this about? Uh, this is in, because it's C and everything, it has to have a type. That's why you do cast, yeah, that's why PHP actually can do a lot of casting and things like that because when you do the casting, they just change the type. Um, and, the, and that's what kind of determines a lot of things down the uh, And if you, so if you see like weird behaviors, like casting stuff, like if you have weird behaviors when you're casting variables, it's probably because of this. But this holds the type. Uh, then there's something called esref, which I'll talk about later. Um, so uh, the C value, the first one I showed you. So this is where the actual value of A equals one is actually stored. So the one is actually stored here. So there is, uh, this is a union. So union is a type of data structure where it's in one place of memory. Uh, and uh, so though it has like multiple types, it only has one place in memory. So you can only access or use one type of attribute, let's say, of this. So if uh, so, I'll just talk about the values there beforehand. So there's LVAL to store uh, long variables, so long values, which are integer long, those things, that long. Uh, and then a resource had uh, resource identifiers like file open, file resources, and things like that. Uh, then there's DVAL, which is uh, double, and booleans are also stored there. Um, also, then there's a struct. Uh, the next struct is a string. So this is where the, your actual, if you have one in double quotes, this is where your string is actually stored. Um, it's the val will store the string and length will have the length of the string. So if you do str length or something, it's actually constant time because length is actually calculated to you while it's been assigned. Uh, that's a string. So hash table is where your arrays are defined. Uh, it's another complex data structure that's behind it. Then there's Zen, va Zen object value, that's where classes, objects, and all those things are stored. Um, um, uh, hash tables and Zen valves actually can go pretty deep. There's a lot of uh, pointers and tables to look up and things like that, so it actually gets a bit more complicated down the line. Um, so this CVAL is very specific for PHP 5. Uh, don't go look at PHP 7, it's totally different. Um, the reduce of, this was one of the most, this was the critic, most critical thing, uh, I think it's the most critical thing that kind of optimized PHP. Because this took more, much more memory and the new version in PHP 7 takes less, much, less amount of memory. When they were profiling, what they figured was that the, they took the PHP code kind of was spending a lot of time allocating and deallocating memory. So memory was one of the key issue, key things they tackled, and that's why PHP 7 is much more faster. Um, did I, uh, did I miss anything? Oh yeah, so as I said before, this is a union, therefore only one of these things is true or has a value or has, has something in it. Um, that's the purpose of a union. Um, any questions? Sorry, I might be going a bit faster. Uh, my apologies. Uh, is, it, is it okay? Do you? Uh, about thread. Thread. 
in SAPI uh, so far. I saw uh, PHP is basically a single process, single thread. Yeah, so PHP is, but not the SAPI or Apache or whatever your Nginx or whatever your front end, uh -huh. let's call it, of your what you're running. That's not that. That's what kind of handles your handles your PHP. PHP might be single thread, but if you want to do multi thread, you could if they could do it if they wanted to. Multi thread is outside of PHP. Yeah, outside of PHP. So yeah, so you can actually choose what you want to do, what your priorities are. Um, okay, so uh, anybody know copy and write? What's meant by that? So 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 this is something a concept called copy and write, which is actually typically there in most of the languages. Uh, this this thing is there. Uh, this philosophy, let's say. Um, uh, so. Let's go through this. Um, so previously, I showed you Z-valve and, um, and the value. Uh, so you have variable A here, which is equal to 1. And you have Z-valve, that's value equals to 1, ref count equals to 1, because it's assigned ones. Now you have B equals A. So what happens is actually there are not two variables, they're one variable. So you can see they have this, they point to the same z valve. So there the value is one, but the ref count is two now, because there is one more reference that's coming in. Now you have c equals b. They all, all of three of them actually point to the same z valve. So the value is the same, ref counting equals three. So, so this is done so they don't have to actually copy these z valves every time. Because if you're not writing to this, why do you want to have another variable stored, right? Um, because everything is by, passed by value. If they had to do this, they would be cop PHP is, wouldn't be a programming language. It would be just a thing that copies variables everywhere. Um, okay, so this, uh, now this is where, next one is where everything gets interesting. Sorry. So is this what an optimization that means? No, no, no. This has been there for long. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, that's a pretty good question. Because it's, it involves CVAL, obviously, because CVAL was optimized, therefore now, this, therefore it's optimized, let's say, indirectly. But this is not the concept to optimize it. Uh, so then you, have, you increment A. Now that A is now a totally different thing. So what happens is B and C stays on the same Z valve and A goes to another Z valve. And you can see the ref count becomes two now. Because now there's no three variables, there's only one or two variables uh, pointing to it. And then A gets um, the value of two and the ref count one. And then you uns now then you unset uh, B and the ref count decrements. You answer C, now the first Z eval decrements, and ref count becomes zero. So when ref count becomes zero, now what it indicates to garbage collector is it's good to go. Delete this thing. Um, yeah, so that's how the Z eval structure and ref counting and copy on write. This is, this is very common in most of the other programming languages also, I think. Um, okay. Uh, any questions on this? Okay. So now we have talked about how PHP works internal, some of the internal stuff. Now what we're coming is the pretty interesting part. Uh, so how does PHP get compiled and how do you, how, what runs it? How does it run? Right? Um, so there's uh, three, let's say three phases for this thing. Uh, one is called lexing, one is called, next one is called parsing, and the next one is generation and running of opcodes, or compiling. Okay, so the lexer is, it identifies what, what um, the, your, um, your, uh, your script. So um, let's just go through the example. 
So you have the PHP. PHP is an, uh, uh, um, PH, the PHP open tag is an open tag. So it's, it's uh, set as an open tag. So this, is, this kind of generalizes your code. Okay, now uh, if you were not to do this, now we have to be looking at, because, because most of the, uh, the otherwise uh, um, you would have to do like string, looking at strings. So though I say it's under uh, T underscore open tag, it's just a string version of it. It's actually uh, just an integer. Um, so it actually saves a lot of memory doing this. Um, there's an also an interesting thing for this, which I will be talking about this later. Uh, next, you actually have a white space. It it's actually has a token for white space. I didn't put to white space here because it kind of clutters the whole thing. Um, next, you have the class, which is the uh, T underscore class. Then you have a string called A. And then you'll see this thing. One of the questions you would have is, okay, now every, everything else has a token to it. Why doesn't this have a token, right? It's because a, it's a single character. It, so it doesn't make any performance difference because it's a single character. It takes the same amount of space that if you put a T, uh, the same things have the same uh, um, um, things, let's say. Sorry. Uh, there is a few places where this becomes a bit different. Not every curl bracer, uh, braces would have this, uh, but there's like a, a variable in a variable a kind of situation. Uh, this would not happen. Um, then you have a next, you have a constant, a public, and then again equal, your number, and uh, the semicolon. And then you have the closed curl brace. So this is what Lexa does. Lexa just replaces things with an identifier. Uh, in the actual Lexa code, this is, uh, this is how it looks like. Um, so the Lexa code is actually in something called Zen language scanner dot I. Um, so you might be curious, why is it I? What the hell is this I? So I is uh, a file uh, that's inputted into a tool called uh, rec C, rec 2 C, which converts these reject C types of uh, code into C code. Uh, that's why it, uh, I'm not sure why it's called I though. They could really easily call it R. Um, <laughs> Uh, so this is the lecture. So it says, if you see an if, put it as an uh, T underscore if. If it's an else if, else if, and end if. Uh, this, is this is the simple uh, section of the lecture. There's some things get a bit more complicated. They, they have to just do a bit more to figure it out. Um, then you come the parser. So now you know what this the data are, but you don't know if it's an if with the else or without the else, or is it a short if, or those kinds of things. So that's what the parser does. Parser creates uh, um, uh, something called an abstract, syn abstract syntax tree, uh, um, which has all the nodes. It, uh, it kind of tells you this is an if, the, which has an expression, and it has statement. The statement is actually another uh, definition like this that says it, it opens with a curly brace, it uh, ends with a uh, closing curly brace, and inside of it, it can have these things. Um, that's what the statement is. Uh, then you go into, uh, then now you know what, um, what your, um, um, now what you do, try to do is you add, try to edit your syntax tree. So they try to say, oh, this is a if, this is the this side, uh, this is the true side of the if, this is the false side of the if, and things like that. Um, yeah. Okay. So you know all those things, and then you come to uh, the compile step of everything. 
so in the compile step, you, it uses the abstract, abstract syntax tree and try to figure out what are the opcodes you, uh, you, uh, you can produce. And the opcodes are the ones that you run and that's what kind of runs your code. Um, so this is, uh, this is the opcode, this is the opcode for uh, uh, echo PHP. And uh, so this is, this is uh, if you have not used uh, VLD, it's Vulkan Logic Dumper. Uh, so it's a tool that you can put uh, PHP scripts to and it produces you the opcodes. So if you want to figure out whether ease array exists or something else is faster, you put it to the uh, VLD and you see the opcodes. The opcodes will tell you what's faster. So there's a nice site that's called, uh, it's, okay. so it's called uh, 3v4l eval. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, 3v4l.org. Uh, so, so this is an interesting site where you can, uh, you can run, put PHP code in here and it should actually run your PHP code in over 200 PHP versions. So you, um, it has like runs code in uh, 200 plus PHP and HHVM versions. So if you're looking for regressions or things like that, this is, uh, this is a pretty good cool tool. Okay, so in this, let me just show you this. So this is my code, I ran it, I can look at performance on PHP, 7.3256 and all of those things and then there's this VLD. So VLD is where the opcodes are for this uh, um, for this uh, code these are the opcodes that are produced. It's actually this is produced by 7.1. Uh, I haven't figured out a way where you can produce the VLD from like 5 in this site. Uh, it just generates the thing on the latest version. Oh, not the latest version actually, it's like 7.1 is not the latest. Um, uh, also, there, there's some interesting things where um, uh, where this tool also like has RFC branches. So RFCs are requests for comments where any if any new uh, new functionality is added to PHP, they, that's, that's done through an RFC where people vote and you can see the branches of RFCs. So you can actually run PHP on a version that nobody actually have even voted on um, and see whether what interesting stuff it does. Um, okay, so, uh, so let me just show you then, so okay. So as you can see, uh, the VRD, the, the, the top stuff doesn't like matter that much. Uh, can you see this? Can, you all can see this, right? Um, so uh, this is the line number of the PHP corresponding uh, PHP code. Uh, this is the opcode number. So line three has two opcodes. I'll, I'll talk about the return later. Um, and these are the, the opcodes that, that's going to run. Uh, so the first uh, opcode is echo and it, Echoes this. That's this is the very simple, and uh, there is a return. Uh, everything in uh, like everything in PHP opcodes has a return. I think almost everything in PHP has a return. If you don't have a return, it still has a return. Uh, that's a safe thing to say. Um, um, yeah. Okay. So this is this is now this is a function call. Um, I made it green and uh, green and red. Um, so the red part is the function, actual fu the function call, and green is the function execution of the function. So uh, if you look at the red, sorry, it's the other way around. Uh, the top one is where it, it calls the function, and the top one is actually the execution. Uh, so the in the top one, if you can see, uh, there's a no op, uh, which means no operation. Uh, I'm not sure why it's there. I'm sure it serves a purpose. 
Um, then there is a um, init f call which is a function call to say uh, now we are going to run a function and zen valve uh, send valve is uh, putting the, the data uh, on a stack. So to now it uh, the f call actually starts up a stack and uh, zen valve send value actually puts that number one into that stack and then you actually do the function call then your next uh, your the, the red box gets invoked there the first one is received so you pull it out of the pull number one out of the stack and you put it on variable zero okay so uh, if you if you see exclamation point zero it's uh, it's something called a compiled variable um, it's not not your typical notion of variable in php but this is just internally uh, very deep it's called a it's called a compiled variable so it takes um, it takes zero and it assigns one to compile variable zero and it actually returns compile variable zero back to the caller um, yeah and as you can see if there is uh, if there is a return there is still another return there is always a return um, okay uh, okay okay um, yeah um, in some way of way of form I think um, yeah I am uh, exactly not sure why they always return but they always return yeah. um, let me see okay so there is another so this is a this is a if statement just looking at it um, so this f uh, so if the, this code has a first it has an assign assigned flag false so that's the assign code that happens then ah okay uh, so boolean not is an uh, is the actual if statement that runs uh, it it uh, it saves it to uh, it saves to variable okay it saves to variable temporarily variable two so this approximate or tilde means it's a it's a temporary variable um, explanation point compiled variables um, uh, difference being uh, uh, these things uh, uh, temporary variables are directly sent to other opcodes as you would see in the next one then you have a jump jump instruction so the jump basically says if uh, if tilde 2 is 0 then jump to uh, opcode 5 if not it will just keep executing so uh, in the true it should just echo out true hit the next jump instruction and uh, return and go out uh, if it's false the code jumps to echo and uh, code jumps to opcode 5 and then it returns afterwards um, that's uh, that okay so this um, this, uh, th this is a for loop where it's kind of the same thing it's uh, this is just a bit more complicated where it's going upwards than like downwards or I'd say it's, uh, it's actually looping basically okay uh, okay so next is the demo okay so I've done some things with P, uh, PHP uh, let's see how it works so I've made it specially for um, okay so I, I did some changes to the PHP syntax basically first you have false and instead of a, uh, instead it being uh, if followed by the expression I'm going to say I'm going to, I change it so that the expression comes first and the if statement 
um, and the if, then the if comes later. Um, I just change it for the hell of it. Uh, so I can just show you some interesting things you can show. Yeah. Um, so this, in my, in, when I, after I modify it, this works. And the other version, uh, this would also serve the same purpose. Uh, then my A, I replace my else with what? Poggio. Poggio. <laughs> yes. I think it's, a, it's fair, right? Yeah. Fairly, fairly OK. Uh, so let's see how can uh, I believe. I have no idea. I'm just using Bye. My, my, Michael to just uh, rewrite PHP. OK. Boggio uh, is my else. So I just replaced it. Um, let's see how I kind of did it. Um, so the, um, yeah. <laughs> so this is the Lexa. Yeah, this is the Lexa. It's a pretty huge file. Um, so, so what's the first thing I need if I wanted to do this in the Lexa? Token. What token? Bojo. Exactly. So I have a if, if it's Bojo, I so if it's Bojo, I just say it's an else. Don't don't worry about it. It's an else. So basically, I'm aliasing the else statement. Okay. Um, then next, what should I do? Order of the order of yeah. So that's the parser now. So now, now kind of PHP knows. PHP knows what this means. It knows this is an else, um, and this they know this is an if. Now we we need to change the order. So it's done in the scanner, the parser code. Uh, oh, this is not the code. Ah, yes. The Wi file. Okay, um, where's this? So I'm going to search for TF. Um, uh, ah, okay. Um, so, so originally it looks like this. Let me, let me try to syntax highlight this. Okay, um, so this is your typical expression um, when PHP works. So there is an if statement, an expression, and then the statement. And then this is just vanilla code, don't think about it. So this is the gist of everything that's there. So what I did, very simple, I said my expression comes first, there is a tf. And then there's the, there's the statement. This is my syntax in my world. And that's pretty much all you have to do. And then you have your own brand new PHP functionality. Question. Uh, yeah. So when the, the last search you brings up the tokens and builds the abstract syntax tree, right? So our, I, I thought that probably when you see the if and then you get the, the the condition and the block for the if and then the block for the else, right? So, but in this case, you are reversing. So, will this affect the building of the tree? Or this, um, this, this program actually cater for it as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so, because the, this is where the, the, this is just a, um, just thinking of it as an FST, like an FST where it says, this is my whole statement. And I identify these blocks. Just dump it into this if statement. Mm -hmm. So you can you can twist it any way you, around you want to. You what you need to do is just identify the blocks. You just put the you, in an if statement. You know there's an uh, there's a condition, there's else, and there's a true. In any order or fashion, just take them, put into these buckets. You can do it any way you want to. It's kind of the rough idea. I'm just hand waving this summer stuff, so it makes it very easy to understand. 
but it's not that simple. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, nobody saw that, right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, my bad. So I uh, this is my own version of PHP. So I I compile PHP and then I run it myself. So this is only for me. Uh, if I wanted to fork PHP, I could do that and then introduce my crazy PHP language. Um, uh, yeah, there's actually no point of doing this, <laughs> as you might say, uh, but what the hell, you can have fun, right? Um, or if you want to introduce some new uh, language constructs into PHP, then you have to obviously do these kind of crazy things. Um, so if you run, um, I don't think anybody actually compiles PHP by themselves, right, here? Because I, how many versions? So I have like few versions of PHP lying around. Um, everything with my hacky kind of things. So if you wanted to ever uh, build PHP, you just clone the source. Uh, you'll have to, if you're on a Mac, it's a bit more harder. You need to install some extensions. After that, you run uh, build the conf and uh, then you run configure, uh, prefix it, and then make, uh, make, and then make install. And then you have your own PHP version uh, to like have fun with. Okay, um, so my PHP version is here, test script one, the else statements runs. L statement runs, and when you make it true, the true statement runs. Um, it works. Um, okay. Uh, any other things that you all want to know before I go ahead? Okay. Um, let's see. It's my, there's a, um, okay, never mind. Okay, so that's one thing I did. And then, for fun, I did something else. So this is, this is Singaporean PHP. <laughs> okay, so I don't use PHP, I use Singapore to open my, every, every, every time I write a script, I say Singapore. And then, um, and then you have the class, lay, right? Lay, and some class. And, Day in, day in, da in, da in. I say da in, and I print. I'm like so Singaporean, and I guess that's Chinese. Sorry, and then I have uh, bu boy tan, tahan, boy tahan. I throw it, and then my whole life is good, <laughs> just for the fun of it. So <laughs> so yeah, you could uh, where's this? You could run it, and everything works works perfectly. Actually, this is not needed. Yeah, so you can uh, you can uh, change the language a bit, like have some fun, and uh, why not? Uh, if, when you want to learn the language, you can just do these kind of interesting things to figure out. How does it work and things like that? Um, yeah, uh, I think that's that. Yes, is there any questions after all of those things? Yeah. Uh, do, do all the calls uh, always contain debug information like source, line source code or something? Yeah. In production? Uh, if you if you get it uh, in production, you just run the opcode. So it's, uh, you need to actually look for it to get it. I don't know how to answer that. It's there, but it's, uh, yeah, it's there. 
Yeah, sorry, uh, I couldn't answer it. So, so you are familiar with GCC and LVM, right? So, uh, what happens is uh, when you compile and you generate the opcode, so you can actually pass in some flag to actually uh, tag the line, uh, line number and the uh, zip character position, or at least the line number. Uh. Then after that, you look into it, the information will be, will be there. Uh. But uh, usually that generates a lot of stuff, so only when you are debugging and you want to see the actual of code. So when you run the program, you pass in some flags say, okay, I want the line number for debugging purposes. Because you know, when you do a stack trace, the stack trace already contains the line number, so it's already there. It's not associated. It might not be associated with the opcode, but you can you can do it. Um, yeah. Uh, so the, I think the first slide or second slide about the, the cache, uh, same cache, right? So currently, that technology is using an HP set and uh, I think this has been there until like from l long time ago. So why uh, is it like much more Oh, okay. So you want to okay. Uh, there's uh, there's few subtle 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 things. Okay, let me say PHP seven zero. Um, let me see. Um, it's a just uh, just a matter of uh, reducing the size of this. So they tried tried quite hard to reduce the size of it, and they I think reduce it by uh, uh, like probably twenty thirty. I think probably more than that. I um, there is. Uh, no, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I'm I'm looking for an exact thing that says the cost information. So I, I just don't have that information. I just I I can't find it right now. But they but they the idea is they try to uh, make the uh, the the structure that actually stores every variable smaller. Therefore, there is no much more allocations or deallocations. Um, so that's kind of the, the gist of the reason. But of cache helps, so it definitely helps. Uh, and yeah, yeah, those kind of things. Um, yeah. Oh, I do release this as a. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, uh, that's pretty much all. Thanks.